Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an automatic crop, wheat, carrot, potato, or beetroot farm in your Minecraft survival or creative world, fully automatic. It requires one villager and no redstone. Uh, so let's get right into the video. But before we get into the material list, what I will say is I recommend you have an iron farm before you start this project. I do have a link to it. I'll put it in the description of one I made. It's super simple that you can make. But it, without an iron farm, you're going to need a substantial amount of iron. Here's what the farm looks like. It's very simple, very easy. I'll make sure to link it in the description so you can make it for yourself. And that is what I use to supply the materials needed for this project. Now, the reason you need so much iron is because the materials required are two chests, a bucket of water, a uh, little over two stacks of hoppers. That's where all the iron's coming from. That's why you need all uh, a lot of wood and you need a lot of iron, which is why I recommend that farm. But once you have a little bit over two stacks, so figure two stacks and about 12 hoppers. I have nine there, so for two stacks and 12 hoppers, and then three stacks of dirt blocks you will need, uh, a stack of building blocks, uh, a little bit more than a stack of glass blocks, a composter, a jack-o'-lantern, and then uh, almost three stacks of whatever crop you're choosing. So it'd be wheat seeds, carrots, potatoes, or beetroot seeds, depending on how you want to do it. For this one, I'm using carrots, and let's jump right into making it. So you're going to pick a flat area, and you're going to dig one block down, dig seven blocks out, and from the beginning block, that's going to be your center. So then you're going to dig seven blocks out from each side, one block down in a cross-like formation, like so, on all four sides. So once again, one block down, seven out from the middle, making sure you leave the middle raised and not to dig that out. You should have something that looks exactly like this. Next, go to either side of the end and then dig one block from either side. So you should have a three block wide little baby cross on the end of your long crosses there. That's the best way to explain it. And then when you have this, you're simply going to dig diagonally one block down and connect the three that you just dug. So you're going to almost make a semicircle or a circle uh, with the three being the ends of the circle. So like this, digging diagonally one block down and across one every time till it's connected like so. And then you can get rid of all the blocks that are in between, except for the middle block. Like I said before, you will want to keep that there, otherwise you'll replace it. So now all I'm doing is I'm digging out the circle we just dug. And this is where our collection system is going to go. And this is where all the hoppers are going to go. So it's very important that you make sure you get rid of all of this digging one block down and making sure not to leave any gaps. And that's it's very simple. This is the easier part of the build is just getting rid of the area you need to work in so we can place down our collection system. Now, if you do decide you don't have to dig down, you can just raise it up one block. But we dug down, and once you have this, go to the end of one of your corners here, place a double chest, and then make sure it's connected. And then once you have that, what you're going to do is you're going to place hoppers facing into the chest here, like so. So all you're going to do is funnel all the hoppers, making sure they all point into the chest, if not each other, and make sure those hoppers are pointing into the chest. You want to make sure every hopper is either funneling into another hopper or the chest itself. Uh, this is because this is our collection system. Now this is where if you don't have an iron farm or you don't have enough iron, you can use a hopper minecart rail system. But I think making the rails and the hopper would probably be maybe slightly less expensive, but roughly about the same. Plus it's a weird area to get in here with rails and a minecart. So I found that hoppers usually work the best. You can make this fall sli uh, farm slightly smaller It'll produce less material, but it will still work if you are short for iron. But if you uh, already have villagers, because you will need one for this project, I'll show you the link to the iron farm. But once you have the entire area filled in and it's all funneling into the chest here, except for the one block in the direct center, what you're going to do is you're going to grab your dirt blocks and place them above the hoppers so that the hoppers can collect the tilled farm. So pretty much if you see a hopper, you're doing something wrong, cover all every single hopper in dirt, make sure you crouch beforehand so you're not opening it like I just did there, and go completely around covering every single hopper with a dirt block. It can't be any other block because this is all going to be our farmland that we will till later and then plant our seeds on uh, so we can grow crops. And this is... Uh, 
since crop or farmland, whatever you want to call it, isn't considered a full block, it will actually go through the block and collected by the hopper, which is why we're using this collection system here like so. Now, once you have this all filled in, again, make sure you leave the center. So you should have everything filled in with dirt, no hopper showing, and a center block. And that's going to be where our bucket of water is placed. You can drop a temporary block next to it, place the composter on top of the water, and then you want your jack-o'-lantern on top. This will prevent the villager from jumping on the composter, and the composter will transform the villager into a farmer. And the water underneath is just to help the crops grow better um, and make fertilized soil or whatever it's called. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take your building blocks and you're going to go around the sides like this. We're going to pretty much make a cage to keep the villager in. Uh, I'm using spruce blocks and then glass on top of it so you can see into the farm. You can just use one solid block all the way around as long as you make it tall enough so the villager can't jump out. But for my sake, I want to make it look nice. So what I'm doing is I'm simply adding a... Uh, a spruce layer first, and then I'm going to take my glass blocks and put one glass block layer all the way around, making sure there's no gaps so the villager cannot come out. And once we went all the way around with the one layer of glass block, I'm going to build it too high. So make sure if you're building from the ground up, you're going to want to make it three blocks high. Uh, if not, at least two blocks high so the villager can't come out. And make sure that uh, no mobs from the outside can come in as well because zombies will try and make their way into this farm with the villager inside. So if you can avoid it, make it tall enough uh, that where the villager, one, obviously can't jump out, and two, that there's no mobs being able to jump or work their way inside this farm, and no gaps. So what I did was I did two high glass all the way around, and then I simply, as an added layer of protection, we're adding a fourth block high, making it spruce, almost making a uh, nice little window all the way around. So you can see into the farm, you can see the villager, and they definitely cannot get out now because it's way too high for them to jump into, which is why we did this. So we're just going to make sure there's no gaps. And now once you have this done and you have the cage built, for the villager, now you need to go get your villager. So the next part of this process is to go get your villager, bring him into the farm. I have a villager breeder. I used my villager breeder and a boat transportation system to bring him into the farm. And you only need the one. After that, close it up, break the boat. He will turn into a farmer from the composter. And the very next step for this project is going to be tilling the farmland and planting the seeds. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna till all the land and as you can see, he's already planting seeds he had stored up from uh, the uh, breeder I had made, which is good and bad because he'll already start doing it. But I want to use carrots for this particular one. Um, so unfortunately, I am going to have to pretty much dig up all the seeds he's placing and replace them with carrots, which is going to be a pain, but that's okay. So make sure you get all the farmland here. You want to get as much crops down as possible to make it more efficient. Because keep in mind, under each one of these dirt blocks is a hopper. So if there's a hopper underneath it, we can easily make it collect more seeds. So all we're doing is going completely around and tilling up all the farmland so we can get ready to plant our seeds while our villager runs around and plants different seeds. So as you can see here, while I'm planting carrots, I'm multitasking and simultaneously removing his regular seeds, collecting his seeds so he can't replace them, and then planting carrots. So that way he's only farming and replanting carrots. Uh, I chose carrots. I figured carrots and the potatoes are best because if you do decide to use uh, wheat seeds or beetroot seeds, um, you have to fill his inventory with one singular thing, whereas with carrots or potatoes, it's a lot easier because you only have to worry about his inventory being filled with uh, only carrots and only potatoes instead of only wheat seeds or only beetroot seeds when it drops two items. Now all we're doing is going on the sides here, digging one block down and placing a trap door and creating more source blocks so that way the, uh, the tilled land that we missed is still... Uh, has some water source going to it, so it'll produce uh, a little bit faster, and we don't have to worry about him uh, not planting crops fast enough and the land untilling and turning back into dirt. So all we're doing is going around all three sides, digging one block out, placing the water block, and then a trap door to keep the water inside the system. And this will drastically help with the farm. And once you're done with all that and all your seeds are planted and all the land is tilled, as you can see, it looks something like this. And this is really where uh, you 
well, can stop if you'd like. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is putting a couple torches on the side so you don't have any mobs spawning on top of or in the farm. That'd be my best recommendation. The uh, jack-o'-lantern definitely helps with that. That's why we put that in the middle. But if you chuck a couple torches here and there, it'll definitely uh, reduce any spawning of any kind. So once you have this, you can technically stop, but what you're going to want to do is make sure he has a full inventory, like I said before. So all we're doing is we're chucking carrots at him, making him pick him up, and then uh, hoping he uh, <laughs> uh, doesn't lose him. So once his inventory is full, he will mine the fully grown carrots, and they will get collected into the system and brought all the way down into the chest here on the corner. As you can see, we already have 34 carrots uh, because we had filled his inventory completely. Next, what I'm doing here is not necessary. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm just making it look nice so it fits the rest of my little town I have in my survival world. If you want to stop before this step, please feel free. Let me know what you think. All I'm doing is making it look nice. This is not required for this project, although maybe one step you might want to include is putting a roof on it. I personally am not putting a roof on it, but I am going to put slabs on the top of there, little cobblestone slabs to prevent uh, any mobs or spiders spawning or wake, making their way up there, so our villager will be completely safe. Um, if not, you're done. But as you can see here, I just made it look nice, put the uh, corners on, so it looks definitely a lot better than it did before, and it matches the theme of our village here, and it doesn't really affect the efficiency of the farm in any way. And if you like this video, please let me know. I will leave a link to the iron farm that you will need or maybe you won't need if you have enough iron stored up. And it's very simple, very easy, and I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think.